rigs are plenty along Azerbaijan's coastline. Oil is the mainstay of the country's economy. It was oil that brought me to the ex-Soviet state at the crossroads of Europe and Asia. And I'm not the only one. Western energy companies have begun tapping deep water oil fields that were left untouched under Soviet rule. Investors from across the globe now do business in the capital Baku and trade there is booming. But Azerbaijani oil isn't just any oil. It's believed to have therapeutic qualities. I traveled to the provincial city of Naftalan to take a look at the country's much talked of oil spas. It's hard to imagine bathing in crude oil, but many here do just that. The oil's called Naftalan after the city. It's thick, heavy, and black. But this man seems to enjoy smearing himself in it. It's his first time here. He's come in hope of curing his joint pain. Of course, it seems odd to outsiders, Valech tells me. It's dirty and black. But this is the world we live in, he says. Everyone should just give it a go and make up their own minds. I don't feel compelled to jump in just yet, though. The bathers here seem to be in their element, but I'm finding it hard to get over the sulfuric smell. After his 10-minute treatment, Tuloglan climbs out of the 38-degree oil. He tells me he suffers from leg and back pain. He's been here once before, a year ago, and it helped relieve the pain. I hope it will help this time too, he says. A retreat here lasts 10 days. The oil spa is just one activity of many. Behind every curtain there's a different procedure, but oil is the common thread. Patients are smothered in it, massaged with it, or wrapped in it. All this reminds me of how it was in the Soviet era. It has nothing at all in common with the health spas I know in the West. I meet Intiza Bakhshalieva, the chief medical doctor here. She examines the patients before they're treated with oil. The oil heals skin irritations, arthritis and infections, she tells me. She claims that it can even cure infertility. I tell Intisar about a number of articles I've read in the Western press, claiming that the oil is carcinogenic. But she insists that naphtalan contains nothing that could cause cancer. It's all nonsense, she says. It's been scientifically proven that the oil isn't harmful. Alexander doesn't seem at all concerned. He's come all the way from Moscow. He says he's seen a lot of the world in his lifetime, but nothing quite like this. I'm really happy with the staff here, he says. Alexander thinks that the spa is comfortable, even familial, but admits that some things aren't quite up to the high standards we have in the West. Some of the procedures here may indeed be a bit much for Western sensibilities. After getting out of the tub, guests are scrubbed down with a shoehorn. This procedure is a fairly lengthy one. Removing the oil takes far longer than the bathing itself. To date, the spa's biggest fans are visitors from the former Soviet Union. But that trend looks set to change, says Ilga Guzenov, who manages the spa. He's hopeful he'll attract people from all corners of the globe. We've already had visitors from Bangladesh, Pakistan, France and Italy, Ilga explains. The Italians were vegetarians. They said they'd be up for anything just as long as we didn't cook any meat. And we've had Germans here too, he tells me. 
Later, I meet guide Elnor Ahundov for a tour of the oil fields. Elnor says Marco Polo wrote about Naftalan in his travel journals back in the 13th century. But the oil here isn't what most people expect it to be. A German engineer established that at this very spot over a hundred years ago. Alno says it was a German who built the first ever oil rig here. But on extracting the oil, he soon realized it wouldn't burn. That's because it doesn't have a petrol component. So the engineer talked to locals and found out that the oil was used to medical ends. Since then, you've been able to buy it in Berlin and Dresden. Once a prosperous spa resort, Naftalan began to fall into disrepair with the fall of the Soviet Union. Today, the city has something bleak about it. Azerbaijan's president wants to make the area into an international spa resort. New spas are already being built here, and a factory has been set up to produce cosmetic and medical products from Naftalan oil. Ahmed is well versed in these processes. He's a local scientist and is familiar with the oil in all its forms. That's not Referring to the crude naftalan, Ahmed says that when it's treated in a vacuum, it turns yellow. Yellow naftalan contains carbon hydride and has a very distinct but pleasant aroma. The oil is then purified using oxygen, which turns it white. Right next door, a new five-star hotel is opening soon. Among its staff are a group of health spa experts from Turkey. The soon-to-be manager and in-house doctor take me on a tour. They assure me that Western tourists will feel quite at home here. The doctor shows me one of the hotel's 98 double rooms. Each contains a double bed, a table, a television, a minibar and a safe. He's also very keen to point out the magnificent view from the window. Two weeks at full board here will cost 900 euros. If that were part of the deal, I might change my mind about dipping my toes in the oil. Only your toes? The staff aren't impressed. So finally, I cave in to the pressure. It's hot. I hope my circulation can cope. It feels a bit like sitting in hot chocolate. But from down here, the acidic smell isn't actually that bad. I do feel pretty drowsy, though. That's perfectly normal, I'm told later. After the first treatment, all you want to do is sleep. From then on, you start feeling the effects. This woman tells me she couldn't move her finger at all. But look what I can do with it now, she says. Until recently, she couldn't bend this finger either. But after three treatments, it's a lot more mobile. Most people here truly believe in Naftalan's healing qualities. I have no reason to doubt them, but I'm not sure that bathing in oil is really my thing. I'd much rather spend my time soaking in good old-fashioned hot water.